Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and this is the Bauer Mock Pads review and we have a separate video for the catching glove, second video for the blocker. This one specifically is for the Bauer Mock Pads and comparing it to the Ultrasonic. This is my custom Ultrasonic set. So we're gonna do a one-to-one -one comparison between these to see what changed and what the differences are. We have a different video that will cover the all the Bauer Mock with the Hyperlite pads because I, there's some shared features there I think are important to talk about. So we'll talk about that as well. For this video, before we jump in here, this video would not have been possible if it wasn't for a local retailer called Front Row Sports. Check them out in the description. They have both Canadian and US stores. So if you're looking to buy hockey equipment, goalie or player, click that link in there, check them out, let them know you came from me. It would be greatly appreciated. So they keep letting me do this stuff for their demo sets. Now, if you want to support the channel, otherwise check out Patreon, buy me a copy, everything through those links comes back into the channel so I can make more content like this and making real like test videos and everything like that and not just snapshot reviews. All right, so right off the bat from here, these mocks are a size large. My preferred size for Bauer pads are XLs. These ultrasonics are an XL. So this is also a stock ultrasonic in terms of flex. Uh, these pads were shipped to me with the incorrect specs on it. And that's why it's a stock flex. Normally I order stiff or X stiff. Uh, these ones came the wrong one. So we got a retail one. So that's kind of good though, because we can compare these. So what we'll do here, first of all, is look at the boot and the boot stiffness and it's pretty stiff. It's not a fused boot. So it's not like the crazy, super stiff boot than anything else. It does have a bit of give to it, but overall it is pretty stiff all the way through. And you can definitely see there, it's still at 120 degree shape like they've had in the past, but it does look a bit different. We'll talk about that in a different view, but you can see the boot flex is pretty stiff overall. And it doesn't really change a whole lot from the previous version. It might be a little bit softer than what is on these ultrasonic, but not a ton and it still is a stiff overall boot design. But the big difference here is the shape and the stiffness of this pad. So when the ultrasonic came out, I was kind of disappointed that they were more curved and they were softer than what I was expecting. Now, when I got these pads, I actually reached out to Bauer and was like, I think these are the wrong specs because one, it's more curved and they're softer. And Bauer's like, no, no, they're, they're fine. But I ordered X stiff. And for Bauer now, since this pad, basically the different stiffness also gives you a different profile. So if you look at the Hyperlite video, you can see that much more curved profile because that's one of their softer options. And again, you can order these Pro Custom to be soft like that. And the stiff you get, the straighter they get. So Ultrasonics were curved and they were a bit less curved than this. I curved this myself to make it a little bit more. So they're a little bit less than this, but they're still a lot more curved than I was expecting and more curved than my 2X Pros. And this curve shape was disappointing to me because I wasn't sure why you would make a curved and a softer pad on their stiff line when the, for me, the 2X Pros I ordered, which were a stiffer flex, but even the stock like 1X were straighter and felt stiffer than what these did stock. So I'm happy to say Bauer has kind of reversed their decision. So this is now the medium stiffness. So what we'll do here is we'll go from the stiffest, the softest pad to the stiffest in that order. So again, all, these are ultrasonics and this is the stock flex and this is the medium flex. And you can see how much that pad bends down here. Honestly, just gets in the way when it doesn't kind of go there, it gets in the way, but that thigh bends like that quite a bit. As you can see, it was overall pretty soft, especially for a Bauer pad. And when we go to the mock, we can definitely see a much, much stiffer pad. Not a ton of movement there at all. A slight movement, and you can see it in the puck machine video that is happening at the, like later on in this video, but you can definitely see there is a little bit of give, but it's super stiff, especially above the knee. And that's very, very impressive. And we go to the X stiff, basically, version. And this, again, my hyperlights, but they're exit. You can see even less movement below the knee and less movement above the knee. Super, super stiff pad. And Bauer happily, I will say, has gone back that route with the mock and really straighten this out, which makes sense if this is going to be their stiff line, allow the hyperlight to be more curved stock and allow this one to really be straight. Because honestly, this is the way it should be on your stiff pad. And this is by far the stiffest retail pad I've seen. I've heard things about Warrior being crazy stiff. So we'll see that in the future hopefully, but this one is awesomely stiff and I really, really like these specs for what they're going for on the mock line. So one thing to note when we look at these side by side, these are an XL and they're obviously taller, depending on how you wear these pads is kind of how you have to size the pad. So this is a large, this is an XL and you can see my knees kind of landing on the same spot. Now that's a bit deceiving because of, it's basically how these are strapped. So if you are going to use the Tune Fit Plus, basically, you should 
go down almost a size, unless if you always use like professor straps on this and pull the pad up anyways, then stay where you are. For me, I don't wear my pad generally like that. I don't wear them tight, I wear them pretty loose. XL for these fit me perfect because I, like I said, I wear them loose. I don't wear that professor strap and it's just how my leg sits on there. But this one is pulling up off my skate and you notice it in that in cam footage all the time or the net cam footage, but you can definitely see where my knees end up landing on there. It's basically the same. It's how that pad, this pad rides up because of that strapping system. And here is the Tune Fit Plus. This is basically Bauer's version of the FRS strapping system that's on the troop. Without it, my leg would sit like way up here and my knee would end up falling out of the block because that's how it sits. But with it, because it's tight and it's pulling your calf, it pulls the pad up. So it rock, like pulls up. So this is a large and it ends up working for me because this strap like does what it does. And it really, it acts as a professor strap as well but it really pulls that pad up the skate and so my knee lands pretty in the middle. And as you can see on the old one, that inner strap went to the outer wing where now it's even tighter on the inside. Again, this pad, I sit right in the middle naturally. If I did use their old tune fit, it would pull the pad up too high. So then I would end up way too low on the knee block. So I would have to go to a large if I wanted to use the tune fit, which is what I did for the hyperlights. But for the Supreme and how I like to wear the pads, this worked for me the best way. So starting at the outside of the pad here and we'll start at the boot. The boot on the mock does look like it's slightly more of an aggressive angle than what this one was. This one looks like it's a little bit less of an angle there. I can't tell if that is or if it's just my eyes playing a trick on me. I haven't seen Bauer's specific marketing for this yet. So I'm just going by off of kind of what this looks like. But the boot size and everything, it looks pretty standard right there in the same bigger little piece right here for the wear guard which is nice to see just so cracks on there would be a little bit more limited but when we turn this the other way basically the shins and everything are still that thick profile through here all the way through and the big difference on the mock and the ultrasonic is that shape so this is more of a straight shape where this one was more curved now this is used to and i curve this a bit as well going on to the face of the pad and obviously this is not important at all but graphics i like the graphics of these pads i've mentioned it for the blocker and the pad review and the glove review and i i think this is an interesting design i like the mod like the airplane aviation type stuff looking going on here with like the interesting little scripts customizer is all right i wish they did more custom colors like so you could have more zone instead of just three but it is what it is and bowers kind of stuck with that but they do have their digi print options like i did on this pad so you can kind of do what you want right i do love how they still do like the 3d embossing or whatever this is called the opposite of it where it has that like in print on it i love that little feature on there just i think that's a kind of cool and gives it a little bit more detail that some other companies aren't doing so that's really cool have a 3d look on it but besides that this face is a new face so it's a new type of cortex i don't exactly know what it's called i'll put it over here if i find out before this review goes live but this cortex is more slippery than what the old one was especially on my ultrasonics and my hyperlights so whatever this is i'm not sure the point of it i heard a few things one is it's supposedly more consistent. I don't know if that's for printing or just overall design. It's supposedly like more durable. It, there's a bunch to it. I also heard somehow that it's better for rebounds. I don't understand who said that and why, but that's what someone said. Regardless, it just works. Like it's a nice material. The printing on it is solid. I had no issues with the printing on this, but I'm sure there's something in the manufacturing which is causing them to go to this, but definitely feels more slippery than what that one did for sure. You still have your interesting binding at the top that's very noticeable for the Supreme line. Just a thing, some people hate that. It can notice what the pad is right away with it. So I understand why Bauer went that route. We are talking rebounds on this pad and once again, Bauer is simply the king. There is no other pad I've used compared to Bauer that rebounds anything like these. They are just rockets off it. And something I noticed, I think this pad rebounds better than what the ultrasonic does. And I think this pad rebounds better than what my hyperlight does. Something about it is really making the pucks just pop off there more. So if that's that face where people are like, oh yeah, the face is, creates more rebounds. Maybe that's the case because the rebounds on this fly off and it's super impressive and i got to give him a ton of credit for it on to the sliding edge and this is where you do see some huge changes so first we'll look at the boot which is honestly it's pretty similar this might be a little fatter but it's honestly pretty similar all the way through same idea it looks about the same size maybe a little bit bigger there but everything else is pretty standard i do like how this has been like gone further so there was a little bit of wear here i didn't wear these pads a lot on ice to be honest 
but there is a bit of wear here and I've always kind of called this spot out for Bauer. So it's nice to see them extend that so that wear will kind of stop. They could have gone a little further, but that's a lot better than what this was because it does kind of cover that right on your boot area. And then we do see a change here where this was on the inner wrap, but this inner wrap kind of doesn't exist anymore. So this is now equivalent like right on the outer wrap for a little bit of foot protection but the way that this pad sits on your foot that's it's covering a lot less than what this used to and we'll show that off in that other view but just calling that out right there before we jump onto the calf wing we'll just talk about this area kind of right now first so kind of similar design all right here just the, the core tech kind of going all the way up and all the way up as you can see, very similar. You can see that straighter profile here. It does look slightly thinner in the knee. I'm not sure if that's just the profile doing that, but it looks like it could be just slightly thinned out profile. As you can see, the connection points here are kind of slightly different. This one does still have that like regress in here, but just this piece does come over the edge a lot more than this. I'm not sure if this is just a demo and like the first manufacturing set or, or what, but that does come out a bit. I did notice that this pad did get a ton of snow on it specifically like right here whenever i would slide on it, there was snow on it didn't mean it slid bad it just that's what it was and you can see a similar design on the knee kind of how that's connected all the way through exposed binding here still but probably not going to actually hit anything much so it's not bad all this has been covered which is a nice thing and now we'll get to this calf plate which is the big change so we'll look at the other side of this calf plate later on but we'll just look at this design right now because this is where a significant change was you can see how this shape is totally different now. So this is now like a real 3D shape. It's just not angled in one way, basically coming to a bump to get the maximum connection point and the maximum stability possible when this lays on the side. Now, but you can really see how that is a massive difference from this shape. This felt good to use, but you definitely notice this edge, like at certain points when you make plays where you kind of almost teeter on it, where this one, I never noticed that whatsoever, but this one, because it does like feel like a sharp point, I did notice almost teetering. It wasn't like I was gonna fall ever back. It's just like, oh, I felt I hit like the edge and then the pad just flopped straight down all the time. So it's it's an interesting feeling and certain, but certainly a different feeling. So the idea with the Hyperlite pad is when the knee is on the ground like there and with this pillow, it flattens out like that. So that's where you get your stability when the pillow pushes your calf down and it does that. Now with the ultrasonic, we can see how it's that angled piece right there, right? So it always sits there. So you don't need your calf to push that down because that shape, as you can see, forces that piece to always be down all the time. So it ideally creates more stability. And with this pillow, it works that way as well. Now, when we add the mock design, you can see that shape. And when it flattens out, it's basically there all the time. And then that will just push it down. Now, this is where I was saying you can feel that edge because if you land back there, it's kind of on that edge. So it's kind of weird. And I noticed myself landing back there a few times because you can feel the edges of the foam when you land on it because it's a little bit harder than what's right here. So you can feel that and you would feel it kind of tilt there, but the pad never ever went that way. It more or less just hit there for a second and flattened out, but it's something I want to call out because it's something I noticed. And here you can get an even better view of kind of that shape, right? And how that is lined up and that piece is always on the ground. You can see, that edge where it would rotate, but it is it's just sitting there flat because of that shape right there. And it's sealing kind of the gap down there. But again, I do notice that. So it's a bit iffy. I'm not sure if that's totally the best idea. I mean, it works like this, but I haven't noticed the other way with the ultrasonic before and haven't noticed it with the hyperlight before, but it's something new on this. I do like how all this binding is basically gone. It's push so far back on the pad it's still there it's just way like deeper this calf is way more 3d than what the old one was so that binding will basically never be on the ice or close to the ice surface it will always be this piece and then the binding wraps right there too but that outer piece like i said there's no more inner wing here so that flap goes right there and the strap goes to there instead of that inner inner wing that inner wing again did that piece right here for the extra like boot protection or ankle protection really because it's going to be really high up there but that is all connected on the outside side knee block construction we'll cover the knee block later but it's kind of the same thing all the way through here as each other it's that obviously built in their stability slide and everything here though is pretty similar and the same so sliding on this pad is 
Interesting. So Bauer has forever been basically one of the best overall sliding pads and that's not really changing, but I still think Bauer has taken a step back since the 2X Pro and I'm going to reiterate this. Well, this feels more slippery. I didn't notice this sliding that great on the ice anymore. Now I have Vaughn SR3s, which are like the best sliding pad on the market because of the spray that they put on their Primo material or whatever quick slide material they're using. This is basically more of a Gen Pro like material. Same with on this. Before on the 2X Pro, it was almost like a plastic. So it felt closer to this than what this is. And same with this. This is also kind of like, it feels like a Gen Pro on a really hard piece of plastic wrapped around it. Same with this. This almost feels more plastic, but I still think this slides worse than the 2X Pros I use because this knee is more of a Gen Pro than, like I said, a plastic. Fortunately, I don't have my 2X Pros anymore, so I can't show it. They slide fine and they don't really get much worse when the ice gets worse. It did have ice buildup, but it wasn't like getting a bad sliding pad. It was still moving fine. It wasn't blowing me away like the SLR3 does and like the Warriors will with that plastic piece and like the 2X Pros did. So I'm, I'm curious why this doesn't continue on over here because I've Maybe it's a durability thing because this definitely feels like it would slide better than what this does. And they're just not absolutely amazing. Now here's where there's quite a few changes of this pad and we'll start with the toe bridge. So now you have a foam toe bridge and it's not just laced into like, I'll show you in a second and a nicely upgraded piece of straps here. So thick Gen Pro or whatever their new Gen Pro type material thing is here and a really simple design and also nice and thick bungee cords can see some fraying from my skates there, but thicker than the old dirt versions and very nice. And this is honestly my favorite retail one besides the true because they're pro laces, but this is like my favorite retail implementation. These are thick, but they're like so flexible and soft. They go through the annoying true tiny true skates hole really easy and they connect really easy. And this works wonderful. Obviously you could pull that cord out there too to make it so you can adjust it. But this one was pretty good. The only thing I will say, this is pretty short. I didn't have to adjust this any to make it tighter. And I feel like someone who might be in a bigger skate, I wear an eight and a half skate, might have problems with length on this. But then again, I guess you could just not go through the toe. Kind of wish this was a little longer just so you had some move on that and you could adjust it. But that's a little bit of a nitpick. And comparison, this was how the old kind of toe bridge was it was laced into the pad here and just had this with a really crappy soft we don't know what happened the company of this is we're not called out and a less thick actual cord here compared to the new one the new one is nice thicker and a better material overall so you should get less fraying and it should last longer now the boot of this pad is also where there are considerable changes the interesting thing is and i showed you how this pad kind of sits on your skate above and with that strapping this piece right here it looks like a deeper channel, as you can see. Like this still has a little tiny bit of a channel, but overall this does look like a deeper channel, but this sits so high up off your skate because of that strapping. I mean, it does a good job for rotations and everything. This does have, like I mentioned, a bit of a channel. And just to give you a 3D look of it, you can see how the depth of it is there, but that sits well off your skate. And you can see here too, still have that depth and almost more depth than what is on this one. But with that strapping, it sits pretty good on your skate. Like I mentioned on these, I never had issues with these at all, like getting in the way or anything, but how this pad sits, I'm actually really surprised at how not flat this is and how it actually does have a bit of a defined channel. I mean, it's not super deep there or anything, but it wasn't on the old one either. But the way the stock strapping on this is, it really like begs to pull the pad up on your skate and really sit way up on your skate. Toe and kind of pad seal on this is just okay. The boot kind of does sit above your skate and we'll kind of show that with the in-net footage as well. But the big thing here is like, as you can see, it kind of sits there. I found when playing, it's super easy to seal this way. And I found a lot of times my pad sealing like this rather than like that gap right here, like on my Warriors and my Micklins. But it seals okay, it's just not crazy. It does kind of sit off the boot, but it doesn't like really come out and kind of stick out. So now we'll look at the calf wing on here and we'll get into strapping off options in a second. So pretty, different design philosophy and almost a step backwards, but we'll kind of get to that in a second. So gone is this exposed foam everywhere. And I love exposed foams. I'm always going to say I love exposed foams and want to see more of them, but this is heavier than what this is. Just there's nothing else to say about this. This piece is considerably heavier than what this nylon is right here with a tiny bit of the exposed foams here. I like this idea, especially with our AeroLite on the vapor pads just to have exposed foams for a little bit more protection because this will offer more protection than what this is. But you're not really going to stop pucks from back here. So I understand Bauer is going for lightweight in this design and 
I can't really fault them for that. As you can see, the elastic options are gone. <laughs> basically, there's only this one spot right here, and that's basically for this to slide down to the calf wing right there. Gone is all right here because of how this connection works. And when you look at the rest of the straps, you can see kind of why that outer calf obviously goes to this outer piece right now. There's no more inner piece where this goes this way, and it is connected to the calf itself and not on the outside of the calf, which I think is a smart move and a smart design. So the calf comes with it and the calf just doesn't kind of like fold in. And as you can see, this inner wing basically right here and right here is all gone for this new design that's kind of just right here. Now talking about that inner wing, you can see you have this wing, the pillow, and then this wing, and then that outer wing. Gone is that inner wing and kind of the this wing right here, this middle piece right there. Pillow is now bigger, but we'll cover that in a second. The strapping for these pads was on, I hated them. So the way it really worked, I changed how this piece worked and I changed because I wanted it to just go straight out like this. So the original way of the strapping basically was reverse. So this piece would be wrapped there and it would go in here around your leg. I couldn't get that strap to be loose enough. So I changed it. So, so it basically reversed it and it goes through here just outside and was like that. Cause again, couldn't get it loose enough. This strapping system though is totally different than what is on the new one. And as well with this calf is so much more open compared to the old one. You can see how much more on the edge this is compared to here. So you do have a more open channel, but the way this inner strap system works, you kind of don't. And you can see also how more open this channel is or how much more on the edge that was. And it would be more open with here too, because you don't have that inner piece here. But this Tune Fit Plus strapping system really makes this pad fit crazy tight on you and pull that pad up the leg a lot. It's basically a professor strap. On the Supreme Ultrasonics, this was kind of their Tune Fit, I think Connect it was called. It was terrible, this was their professor strap. This is the only strap I've ever had that actually ripped off in mid gameplay. This piece basically, because it's Velcro, actually on a like hard push, pulled off and the strap fell out of the little loop here. Well, gone are those loops. As you can see, they're not there anymore because this is the system in replace. This was a terrible strap. It was updated considerably for the Hyperlites, which this one was a much better option, but this is honestly even better if you want that professor strap type feeling in there. Now, this is basically a not as good clone as a, the true FRS system. But basically you have two straps here that go through these loops. So there's a Gen Pro loop down here and there's a Gen Pro loop up here and you can adjust them to be tighter or looser. I basically adjusted these to be as loose as possible and they still felt too tight on my legs. So I'm kind of disappointed with Bauer in terms of their strapping on here just because again and again and again, I cannot adjust their pads to be loose enough for me. That happened here where I, like these straps weren't loose enough. This was a custom set and I couldn't order XXX long straps like I could on the old ones. So it's a bit disappointing. Again, same thing here. It's a strap so you can modify it and do whatever you want to it to kind of make it fit a little bit better. But I kind of wish this was like a different design where this wasn't connected. So it would have like, maybe this was just here and then this would have a piece of Velcro here as well going over there and looping on itself or something. Just, I don't, couldn't get enough adjustability out of this. Obviously you can go tight like that and loose like that, but it just wasn't enough to make it actually fit comfortable on my leg. I still wanted it looser and I couldn't wear these pads without taking this off the way I wanted to. It would always pull it up. Now these are a large, so I needed it to be pulled up, but I couldn't wear it loose because I wanted to compare loose to this to loose to this to see how the pad felt, but I couldn't because of the strapping system. So the only thing I could really do is just take it out totally, but I still didn't feel like this was connected enough without kind of something inside there. So it's kind of disappointing in that sense, but that is how this strap works. You can connect there. It has a breathable foam in here. As you can see, it has like some holes in there and some nylons and it has this piece right here that connects to this spot right here. Now, this is also a part of annoyance. This has felt fine on my leg. It cut off circulation a bit. So my legs were tired because of how tight this was and how it was always pulled on. So it was kind of annoying in that sense, but you're not really going to get away with that, unfortunately, because it's just, it was too tight. But what I want to call out here is I hate this strap. I really wish this somehow connected here so I could adjust this because there's like this flap is honestly just not big enough. One, almost impossible to get on the right way I wanted to. And there's always like Velcro sticking off of it. I ended up having to wear it like this with the sticky Velcro on the other side exposed, which was annoying and I wish it was slightly different. I don't know how you could do this in terms of making this longer because it's kind of like when you actually do it up, look, there's like no gap anyways, right? So it's kind of hard to make that really longer and make that stick. I feel like if you made this piece smaller, it wouldn't grip enough either. So just slightly like annoying and how that kind of all worked. 
I, I'm not sure what else you could do. Maybe you could just like pull it out here and make that work that way, which is a possibility. But I was using this strap down here and that isn't gonna work because this one can't really like, it works a little bit, but that's gonna get in the way of that. But it just wasn't something that I really loved, just the size. Again, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be able to use this totally fine. I just wish there was a different solution for this. I really do believe the true FRS system is a better design than this, but this is a kind of a compromise and them doing their own thing. And it does its job of pulling the pad up. It just, I don't know, maybe the execution wasn't my favorite, but I'm happy that this is in here because it is definitely a co competitor to that FRS system on Trues, which is an awesome strapping system. So the calf support system, which is this pillow. Pillow here to help your calf kind of sit on here, help that seal compared to the old one, which is little flimsy pillow that got Velcroed in as you can see. And that was kind of it. This is a huge, huge improvement. So you can see how this is kind of angled right here. So your calf kind of sits right inside this which is an interesting idea and an interesting kind of idea or design. And you can see it kind of right there. Now it is harder on the edges and you can feel it on the edges. It's like the foam in there. It's a little bit softer in the middle, but it's like, you can definitely feel that angled piece. The weird part about this, and I noticed it a lot whenever I was like on the edges, I felt like I was on the edges and it, see how it kind of rolls. I kind of felt that a little bit. And that is in part because of the shape. Whereas on this one, it doesn't roll at all it just stays flat and this one definitely if my leg kind of came off a little bit out here it i kind of noticed that a little bit stability overall like i said was fine and good but you definitely notice that kind of like hitting that edge so interesting choice i don't think this should have really been angled like this maybe it's angled like this to try to stop you from hitting that like going over there but if that's the case i would have just preferred this side to be higher and this side not like sloped so it would just be sloped that way to keep your leg down here and inside of it and that way it wasn't like kind of see how it's like moving just kind of push you that direction maybe they did that for a reason but an interesting design i love it because it is raising your calf a bit as you can see even right here it's going to raise your calf and it helps with seal pretty well and i'm a huge fan of this this is closer to what is on the hyperlight so they brought that to supreme great thing now i will say this i have seen pro versions of basically this pillow being massive like all here reimer had it when he was in the for i think the panthers and the hurricanes i still would like to see something like that here but this is a great solution and i'm a huge fan this is here another big change with this wrap is as you can see on the old one it bends so you could really move it in and out like this where this one has a velcro basically right down here and it doesn't really move as you can see so it plays very like stuck into the pad similar to this idea but it's not moving a whole ton where this one definitely moved a lot more now i'm going to assume bauer doesn't really want me to show this off but the way that this sits a lot tighter so it doesn't move is kind of similar to what is going on there so there is velcro down here and if you unvelcro this you can see this well it's styrofoam but it's like it's going to be called a different foam but it's really similar to what styrofoam feels like and it's in there and that's not the first time bauer and companies have been using that so i wouldn't necessarily this is say this is cheap it's just called something else it's like poly i can't remember the exact wording for it regardless you can see these plastic things digging into the pad so that's obviously going through the, or I don't know if it's going through the pillow per se, but it's going up into this calf plate and that's stopping that piece from flexing out and in. And sorry, this is hard to get a view of this. So you can see it move a little bit, but it's stopping it for the most. And that's how it is with these plastic pieces going into the core of the pad. So very similar to what is done on the knee itself. And you can again, pull the knee back right here and see that foam, which is kind of a similar foam. Speaking of this pillow right here, you can kind of see some fraying going on right here. And it's kind of hard to get in the camera because it's really minimal. And it's a little bit on the other one too. I noticed some Velcro getting caught up here. I would have liked to maybe see this to be that weird material like here. That's like right on there. A little bit here just to cover these spots where this Velcro could catch on to. Not a huge thing, but I did notice it on my Hyperlite pads. You can see this pillow right here wearing because of a Velcro. And I think that is from the, their Tune Fit Connect professor strap thing. So would have been nice to just see that. Now at this stage, we shouldn't really have to cover this anymore because Bauer has been really good at this forever. The core flex of the pad is still very stiff. As you can see, it's still stiff. This isn't going anywhere. This, the core itself is going to be durable across the face. So you won't really get much pad bending through there because of how stiff that is. As well, the torsion flex on it and everything is basically zero just because of how stiff this pad really is. For pad seal, you can see it's excellent just like this. And then when you lean in, it's still excellent. The pad doesn't rotate at all. This is where the torsional flex of the genetic pad you can feel a lot more because when you lean into this, the pads really, like the whole pad staying exactly where it is and it doesn't want to lean whatsoever. That seal is excellent though and Supremes are known for 
for that. And like, even when you're leaning off there, that thigh rise is still pretty good. So it's really impressive. Things I've noticed with this so far, this thing totally stops pucks. Having that, it's not quite that rounded roll like it was on the old CCM Premier pads, but having that definitely, I know some pucks get stuck on there and there's actually puck marks like right here. And when I was dropping, didn't quite get there fast enough, but this part held it. The other thing I noticed while stability is excellent. And overall, like the whole pad feels very stable. If you end up like this, so you're kind of almost over rotated, but you're like leaning, you can feel hitting the edge and then kind of flipping over. So I've noticed a few times where I was like stretching like this, I could feel that edge. One, it's sealing better right here down there. I can feel it sealing better, but uh, there was kind of some instability moments where I was kind of like in an awkward position. It was like this, hit that edge and then just flipped and sat back down normally. So it was a little bit odd. This pad back here, you can really, really feel it. And it's like right here, all the way up here. When you're down, you can really feel it. And you can feel like the hard edges of it basically, because the foam's on the sides are a little harder than what's in the middle, but it has a nice channel for your leg. But it does an excellent job of working with that like shaped calf to really seal the thigh. Cause like I'm raising a bit and that, I can still feel the calf on the actual like ice right now. And that's pretty impressive. And you can definitely feel like how that moves and stability is interesting because stability on this pad was excellent. But the difference is because you're in that little pillow wing thing, you can feel yourself moving in it where I feel like this one, my leg felt more stable in the pad overall, just because I wasn't moving within that channel. So just as the pad itself felt extremely, extremely stable. But with this one, because of that, I do feel a bit less stable just because my legs moving on that, but the pad is itself is staying pretty sealed and stable on the ice. But you can see when you open that leg channel up, like how little this pillow is compared to the new one and how that really ramps kind of your leg up and kind of puts your leg there. This is a much more kind of open channel just because it doesn't have your leg kind of sitting in there, but it does act totally different. It feels very, very different. Now, while this is also not important whatsoever, I'm gonna call it out just because, I mean, it's what I do. The liner and everything on this, I feel like is definitely a step towards, I'm gonna say lighter, but also cheaper. I do like the Gen Pro like logo here and everything, that's really cool. But all of this nylon, actually this nylon does feel more heavy duty than what the old one is. I miss that interesting shape, as you can see on that nylon. I thought that was really an interesting touch on the Bauer lines. That's gone, unfortunately, but this nylon does feel actually pretty heavy duty, but it feels lighter. I do miss that this Nash, which was this awesome piece all the way through here, which again, not important. And it was grippy on the Supreme text where it's totally gone. There's no Nash on here anymore at all. It's all just nylon all the way through. Again, this isn't an important thing whatsoever. It's just, I thought that looked great. I thought it felt great, but you don't really feel it right when you're using it. So I get why they went this way. It just kind of feels like it's a step back. Something that is really interesting is there is no curve logo on here. So there was curve right there without the logo. There's no curve here anywhere, which is very interesting that it's gone. Usually they would always show that off. Other thing I love about this pad though, and it's a super small thing. I do love this like circuit board imagery on the inside here. It's just printed on the nylon. It's not important at all, but I like Bauer's attention to detail for that. It is really nice. And it's kind of a cool thing where the inside, the outside looks like an aircraft and the inside looks like circuit boards, which are also all over aircraft. So I think that's kind of cool. Another thing Bauer has done very well is all their little straps. The attention to detail on these are great. This could have just been this, a leather piece, but they do have that cool, their new logo. I don't like that logo, but regardless, new logo, interesting shape too. And again, nice attention to detail. And then on the other side here, they do have that little tab. So it's a nice leather or gen pro piece with a tab on there. And this one doesn't have a tab, but it is a nice touch there. These ones are a little cheaper, just having an elastic and the, you can see right there in the Velcro, but you're not really pulling that one on and off all the time where this one you are. So get why this one doesn't have a tab because it honestly barely fits as it is anyways. And the tab would probably help pull it off when you're using it. So I get that. This one is a nice attention to detail though. And I do love how they clearly changed this and listen to feedback where these are now Velcroable. So the strap can actually go on there where this one wasn't and really limited where you could actually get strap on there. Now I know this is available as a custom thing and I'm not sure what the retail versions are. I was just giving these pads, but I, when I get demo pads like this, it's not like you get the whole thing, like you get the little strap systems and stuff. So I don't know if there is a bootstrap here. Now it still has all the little holes for it, which is right here. And it has it like right here for that bootstrap. And obviously this one has that bootstrap because this was a custom pad and I ordered that bootstrap. I don't use bootstraps anymore. I just ordered this so I could carry it because I would put this loop through my pads right here 
and then throw something like a string or have like a patch carrying case thing bit or strap put that over my shoulder all good this you don't really have anything here you could do it through here but it's slightly annoying just because it's like not easy to get to so it would be nice if they had like a loop here or on the thighs or somewhere so you could carry these pads easier with like out having to do these elastics anywhere and stretch elastics so that would be a nice little thing and if they do have the bootstrap then your kind of issues gone but something like that would be a nice little touch and i feel like bowers kind of miss out on that going on to the knee area the whole thing is pretty similar to be honest with a small a couple small slight nice changes but also some takeaways so the knee is still at stability slide so it does have that piece going in there really lock in we'll do a test on how stable it is in a second but we're going to talk about the straps and just the block everything pretty similar there the straps are actually tight enough at this point so it's adjustable like that and I was able to, I was happy with the tightness of this. My knee wasn't falling out, but honestly, that's more of this tune fit than anything else. With this one, I had to tape it because the Velcro basically stopped back here and this was always too loose. But again, I didn't have this tune fit. So that's really holding my leg in place, which isn't allowing the knee pop out. So this isn't needed as much. So you can see that even with me taping this considerably shorter, this strap is basically the same. Just a little bit longer than what this one is. So I'm assuming this is gonna be tight enough for strapping because this one was tight enough for me after I taped it. I still wish this was more. You could just keep putting that Velcro all the way up here to make it really adjustable and really for tightness. The open channel is basically the same. The one thing that is kind of disappointing, you can see this is smaller, but when you flip it over, it's actually more of the elastic zones because of this here and where this was. So that is kind of nice. No more exposed foams here, but. I mean, this is more of a Velcro spot, so who really cares? The one disappointing thing is there's only one adjustment point here where this one had two, so you could do tighter and looser outside wing. This one only has one, which is pretty much on the tighter one, but I guess that's probably what most people are using, but that'd be so easy just to add that one extra piece there. So kind of disappointing that they didn't just move that one more over to have the adjustability. Now on the inside of the knees, you can see it's just a Nash. It's not sure grip or the crappy sure grip that was on the Hyperlite. It's just this stability, this Nash with this stability slide kind of, I'm assuming this is for Velcro pieces, just for durability, where the old one had that nice, soft, whatever this was. I loved this material, it was super nice. But again, knee pads, so you're not really ever gonna feel that. Stiffness wise, the new one does feel honestly pretty same in terms of landing on it. I didn't have issues using this back to back in terms of like knee pain or anything. I actually did use these twice in one night. No issues at all. My knees weren't like bothering me. So it did have decent padding on there, which is a nice thing. You lost this kind of wear zone right here. It's all Nash. So I think you might not need it as much as what then this one. And for the actual stability of the block itself. So as you can see, this block doesn't like move at all, right? It's very tight in there and it's not moving whatsoever. And you go to this one and the movement is basically the same. It very moves very little, still a little bit of movement in there, but not a ton and it's plays very similar. And when we flip it over this way, you can see there's more of a gap on this. So you kind of think that's a little bit more like the stability flex and it does move a little bit up there. As you can see the whole pad kind of flexing down a little bit, but still gets in the way basically instantly with this or this one. Same thing, gets in the way instantly, but definitely less moving. Even though this pad does have a gap here, just like the Hyperlite, it doesn't really flex at all. And you go down, it goes a little bit, but it gets in the way basically instantly. And it's the piece underneath that kind of gets in the way. But again, that pad's not really going to flex much. It's super minimal because of, without something pulling this down, it's gonna stay there. And this pad is a very stiff pad to begin with. Now I've constantly seen people talk about how the stability slide block and the spilly flex block is a total game changer for how fast pads go down. I don't totally agree that it's a massive game changer. The thing that I like about this the most is durability for this because the one thing I see on pads is when they get older is this wing normally if it wasn't like built into the pad gets so sloppy that when you push down it just flaps and then the pad gets delayed. But when it's a new pad like this, the performance benefits honestly, I don't notice them that much. I've used so many modern pads now. When I first used this pad, and the stability slide. I noticed a quick response to it, but I noticed it more going up than I did going down, which was interesting. So even pads without a sewn in knee block like this, which you can see the move and even this one, cause these ones aren't crazy. I don't notice these being slower when dropping than compared to the integrated knee block that's on pads now. And I also find that if you wear a professor strap or tight straps around here, like an FRS system, and well, the, the system on the Bauer Mox, that kind of replicates what they're kind of trying to do here with the instant response, because your pad and your leg with a tight strap are like right below the knee, 
is pushing the pad down instantly and it isn't really allowing like any flex this way because the all force is basically in here of the pad. So I don't really find this to be such a game changing thing as I will even admit that I said before and that a lot of other people are saying it is. It's kind of a give and take and honestly it's not a feature that I need on my pair of pads. So that's about it for my review of the Bauer mock goalie pads. Make sure you check out the other videos with the gloves, the blocker, as well as comparing this to the Hyperlite pads because I think that's kind of an important one here because some of the features are kind of shared now. I'm very impressed with these pads. I think Bauer is definitely going in, like continuing to make small, nice improvements. With that said, it also feels like Bauer is always like getting something done without having that final bit of QA and touch and like care. What I mean by that is like the length of these straps. It happened on the Ultrasonic. It happened on the Hyperlite. How aren't these just more adjustable so people who have maybe i have fat legs but people who have bigger legs and small legs can wear this without like at the very edge of the velcro just small things like that where i think like if i got this set first the first thing i would say to you is i need to make the, be able to make this strapping system looser without taking it off totally and it's just not possible the only way for me to wear this pad the way i want to which is a lot looser, is to rip this out completely. Now, I'm also going to make the assumption that the whole point of this pad is that you can go smaller for pros. And I say that because I don't have to do with NHL regulations, right? I don't need height sizing, but pros do. This is going to massively help with that pad pulling up. But if you want a looser fitting pad, this doesn't work. Same with kind of what happened on the ultrasonics and the hyperlights. You can't make it work with the how they design their normal like pad system to be loose. You have to rip it all out like I did in the ultrasonics or not wear anything on the inside, which I do with the hyperlights. So it's kind of frustrating that that is a, I really wish Bauer took the time to send something like these to someone that's gonna make those comments. So this would be better for everyone overall because in this current state, I'm not super comfortable just the strap going to here. If I had an XL of these and removing this totally, I would want something more. The pros have an option to have a strap that basically loops in and it's seen on the Vegas goalies where it comes here, it loops through and just that's it. That's the only strap that you I would need, but I don't trust just this right there. So I'd like to see something different. I would like to see them kind of listen to that and to make small changes like that. And remember this video only happened because of Front Row Sport. Check them out in the description. They're in Canada and the United States. So if you need to buy hockey gear, Check out them. Tell them you're from me. It'd be greatly appreciated. So hopefully more videos like this can come in the future. Otherwise, if you want me to review more gear like this, like say, for example, CCM Access 2, reach out to the companies on social media like CCM. Or if you want to see the True 20.2, reach out to True. Let them know you want to see me review the gear and do all of stuff like this and make content on it. It'd be greatly appreciated. And something might happen where I get a demo set like this and be able to try stuff out. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Remember to subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Links are in the description. If you want to support the channel, check out patreon buy me a coffee everything through there comes right back into the channel so i can make more content and doing videos like this thank you very much for watching and take it easy you're watching hockeyreviews.ca